Taylor, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. Particularly like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it, man. This is a warning label, man, just in case. I'm I'm pretty sure nothing, I don't know. But you can catch us on Twitch, man. If we go live, previous lives or future lives, twitch.com. The username's at the bottom of the screen. We also got Patreon where we post five days a week. All of that is located in the description below. And this is Tyler Oliveira. Oliveira. I'm 100%. This is my first time doing a reaction to any of his content. But you know he covering the UK, so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta lock in. Uh, I investigated London's knife stabbing epidemic. Man, talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. 100%. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, wait. Let me like the video before I watch. And let me sub. Talk to me. Put down the knife. Put it down. Put it down. Put it, put down the knife. This is the United Kingdom. Yo. Where it's illegal to carry a knife longer than three inches in public without good purpose and is punishable up to four years in prison. As of 2022, 40% of all homicides in England and Wales was done using a sharp instrument like a knife or a broken bottle. And knife crime is up 76% over the last 10 years. Knives have become the primary boogeyman for politicians to point the blame at. They say a man drove into a house and then began stabbing people with a sword. Oh, please. Oh, I think I've been stabbed in car about 24 times. Oh, he got the man man over here he got my boy i've been shot five times. Wait, wait. coming up this is, this is just illegal intro? and as of january 2024 new laws passed making the we purchase of zombie intro. blades illegal but is knife crime as bad as the media paints it out to be are people afraid of getting stabbed while walking the streets of london and will banning the purchase no the banning of the purchases of those type of knives will not stop anything because most branded articles that are used are kitchen knives and can't ban those. Just of knives stop people from stabbing each other? I pulled up to Camden, a borough in central London, to find out. Then it's not a knife's fault. It depends who's got them. But I wouldn't say ban. I'm not into banning anything, really. I'm into regulation. Okay. Like zombie blades or just like all the knives? Pretty much everything. All of them? You think knives should be banned? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like all of them or just like the big zombie knives? Any. Any? Yeah. Anyone that carries uh, knives in the streets are cowards. I think if you was to sit there and say, no, I don't think they should be banned, something's wrong. Something's wrong with you? Something's wrong. Yeah. yeah. You shouldn't need to walk around with a knife. What do you cut your bread with? A knife, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People don't even be thinking about that. How are you going to ban knives and you cut your bread, you cut your meats, you cut like kitchen knives are the most commonly used knives in the streets. No, you're right. That's my dilemma. Yeah. So. What what would happen? Would people start cutting their food with like plastic knives? Oh, forks. Okay, interesting. What about like a steak? You have to use a knife, but you can use a little, little tiny no. one. No sharp. Remind yourself, no okay, sharp. Okay. All right, all right. So it's all about that sharpness. Exactly. I'm scared of my gun. At this point, people are waffling. I was at school, someone tried to steal everything off of me because with a knife. Take away the weapons. Okay. Man. Knives? Knives. Just like, like on the street? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. What about like kitchen knives? Mm, you can't really do that, can you? I don't know. Why do you, why do you need a blade that big? Sure, like let's say even a sword. Just a sword? Yeah. Um, you're always going to have the hobbyists out there, right? Yeah, yeah the hobbyists. If yeah. used in the right way, nothing should be banned really, but that's very difficult to police, isn't it? Knives should be banned. No? Yes. Yeah? All of them? Yes. Even kitchen knives? Yes. <laughs> Of course they should. Yeah. But knives don't kill people. People kill people. All right. Thanks. Thanks. I think it depends on the context. Where okay. do you uh, find the people with the knives? Probably in concerts or uh, public places might be banned. Not banned, but they have to take more control. No, speak English. Like 
Um, like oh. knives are banned in public places right now. Apparently, right? Anything over four inches, they catch you in, in public. You're going to jail. It has to have a reasonable purpose behind it. But do you think criminals care? You can ban whatever you want. The people that want to carry them are going to get them. It doesn't matter. No. You're only stopping law-abiding citizens from getting them. Not the bad guy. Oh no, no. he goes for cookies. Ah, cocina. Yes. I actually went to school um, with someone who died from a knife crime. I think that with banning anything, it's not as easy as you're just going to be able to get everything off the street. Things are right. always going to happen regardless. Like, for example, we don't have guns here, but we still have, you know, it, it, we still have gun violence. It's not as common. Sure. It would have to be a very detailed plan, really cracking down on different areas. It's a very complex issue that I don't think a flustered 21 year old who just saw you on the street can answer. Yeah, no, hey, you did a great job though, jumping in that. She did. Into the kitchen. Not the ones in the kitchen. Sure. I mean, I guess the question is if I bring it out of the kitchen, it's now on the streets, right? I guess. I'm not really around knives much. Same. Do you think all of the knives should be banned? I mean, yeah. It is better not just for like, you know, for us. It's for uh, like, you know, because some people when they're like drunk or something, they wouldn't like, you know, think about what they're doing. So directly they would just stab. And then like when they wake up from being drunk and they know what they did, they're gonna be like, yeah, I did the biggest <laughs> mistake of life. Yeah, stay away from booze. We watch too much TV. That ain't it. Booze. Yeah. Buy that app and it'll be easy. Uh, you can buy them in Morrison. Uh, okay, right over there. Better in, yeah. Morrison's, all right, let me see what I can do. We are going to purchase a knife. Boom. Do you think knives should be banned? Not really, because you need them in the kitchen. So like, how are you gonna, do you know what I mean? How do you do it, right? I think when it comes to knife crime, you need to look at the social causes, not just how easy it is to buy a knife. Like, I think there's a lot more to it than that. I think you're better off, instead of banning knives, I think you're better off actually um, investing in young people. I think that's the way that you stop knife crime. I think you're onto something. Thank, Thank you. you. She's definitely onto something. Because banning the knife <laughs> is not going to solve poverty, uh, uh, nothing, n job scarcity, um, kids having nothing to do, getting bored, turning to violence. Like, it's not going to solve that. Now I'm going to go on a mass murder spree. Kidding, kidding. Please don't call the cops. All right, bye. Let's say you do ban these. The question then becomes... Is this a sufficient enough deterrent to stop me from getting a chunk of metal and sharpening it myself? I don't know. Honestly, probably, yeah. I'd be too lazy to go make my own knife, but I would get the screwdriver and start hacking away personally. And if not a knife, they own a pair of scissors. Right, 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 right. He's making valid points here. Screwdrivers, broken glass, scissors. I think what they're really saying is ban slightly weaponized sharp things. But this is not intended to be a weapon. So where does this logic end? Question for you, miss. Do you think knives should be banned? Yes, definitely. Like yeah. something like this? Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. What if I need to cut my bread? Well, I mean, outside or inside? What if I bring it outside? Only if it's near your flat or where you live, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a bad knife crime in Camden. It's really bad. No one's controlling uh, yeah, it. Camden. And it's along oh, with uh, phones being oh, yeah. snatched is also another big problem here. But yeah, I wouldn't do it, yeah. Why is it so bad here, do you think? Because um, there's nothing for the kids to do. So they're just like wandering around with no activities. And I think that's part of it. Do you Told you. Told you. Knives should be banned? Yeah, of course, man. Use your hands, yeah, man. Nice, man. Use Peace your hands, bro. Peace what, and what love. about these right here? What if I'm cutting bread That's tonight? Cook kitchen. It, it should be a much stricter sort of administration on it. From this video, the six minutes that I've watched, I can tell people don't realize that kitchen cutlery is a, like a knife. Those are the knives that are mostly being used. Of course, when you watch videos, you see the big, huge zombie blades with the with the with the with the double sided and the, and the little holes in them to make them look like something like yeah you see those but the kitchen ones are the ones that are being used and do you think that logic should apply to all knives yeah all knives anything sharp if you can do damage with it it should be registered could you stop someone from finding something else that's sharp no if anyone wants to hurt themselves they'll do it but or i think that's more of a else. that's more of a reflection on the mental health process than the okay that's the interesting ability. they can't they can't be banned because you have to use them for sure, eating. Sure, sure. What about like a sword? Maybe, <laughs> maybe yes. Yeah, maybe. All right. If you want to stab someone, you don't need a knife. You can use a pencil, you can use a pen. You don't need 100%. A knife. You know, it needs education. What do you think about that? 
We don't like guns, we don't like violins. Didn't use knives for violins. Okay. That's I figured it out. The simple answer is ban violence. But this new Where is he from? He from America. This guy zombie knife ban begs the question once zombie knives are banned should regular kitchen knives also be banned can a government regulate violence out of people or will people just find other creative ways of hurting each other i pulled up to edmonton and met up with Farron, an anti-knife crime activist and vigilante i know Farron. A superhero who runs a knife. I don't know Farron, but I watched this documentary. The amnesty program where he meets up with knife owners, allowing them to anonymously turn their knives in, avoid criminal charges for possessing them in the first place, all while taking knives off the streets. Young people see me as a place of hope and a place of relief where I'm able to take their weapons with no consequences. It's anonymous. I'll then dispose of them. Anonymous? Say it again, Farron? Able to take their weapons with no consequences. It's anonymous. I'll then dispose of them through the police or we're going to start actually processing them ourselves and melting them down into other objects out of stainless steel that could be used for the bettering of young people in the community. Like the main aim is if we can transform these young children's mental thinking then hopefully that should transition to positive actions. And how many knives would you say you've retrieved from the youth the time you've been doing this? Just under 5,000 right now. Whoa. Yeah there's a lot. We work strategically with FAZ and different organisations. When FAZ takes the weapons off them, sometimes they need more longer term support and it's how we work with them afterwards to stop them from going back into the gangs or stop back from taking knives. When I say knives, we're not talking about kitchen knives, yeah? What are we talking about? So come along and you find <laughs> out. Are these blades? Oh, two swords right here? Oh. oh. This oh, is no. what FAZ got just yesterday. What? Yeah. Mate, all you got to do is look at the news. They're going to see that people's been getting nearly de decapitated with machetes. Yo. Oh, whoa. Yeah. I thought it was nothing as well until I saw that hanging at the end of it. That could do some damage. I mean, we're getting creative here. This is like Viking ass. No. This serrated edge is like brutal. Brutal in that, it? But I mean, that's just like intended to like paint. Look at this still. Yeah, it like, it looks like proper hardened. Serrated edges are for the come out. When you pull it out, that's where it does all its damage, right? What's it like? What is, what is the purpose of this? This is for hunting, right? Or the, like when you in the wilderness. <laughs> Still, yeah. put away oh, that. Yo. Yeah. This is cool. I mean, yeah, hold that. All right. I'll hold that for you. Put it apart. Whoa. This is crazy. I mean, this looks casual. You could be chilling. You'd be like, looks like a little um, bamboo stick. Hold that. Oh. Just like intended. Oh. Yeah. This was in Game of Thrones, wasn't it? This is cool. I mean, oh. Bamboo. This is crazy. I mean, this looks casual. You could be chilling. You'd be like, Looks like a little um, bamboo stick. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yo. I mean, would this even hurt someone? Could it hurt yourself? Yeah, I guess if it hit you, it's just a goofy at a certain point. When when people typically hand these in, are they like, you know, I made a mistake. I, I shouldn't have had this knife. There's so I need many to get... different reasons. And... Damn, this would do some damage. Are people typically hiding them in their pants? They're hiding them in the bottom of their shoe underneath their inner soles. They're hiding them in bushes and stuff like that. You think you've been given blades that are murder weapons? If someone told me they've hurt someone with a weapon, I'll never take it. Like, I'm not here to facilitate murders. Sure. And, and be an alibi to someone. I didn't even think about that. I've done a collection where I handed in 130 weapons and they blood tested every single weapon and there weren't one bit of blood in it. Um, I believe that if someone done something with a weapon, they wouldn't wait around for me to collect it. They could just dispose of it themselves, you know what I mean? And what got you into this? I've been in a situation where I've been stabbed on two separate occasions. In it, um, I've got a total of eight stab wounds. Brass knuckles, uh, too? Yeah, that's, that's, that's everything. Oh, they got guns in there? Like, um... I'm pretty sure they're fake, but they look like... What are they called again with a fake name? Yeah. Even got a taser in there somewhere. I don't even <laughs> this know. Is how Replicas. Oh, whoa. If I sent someone. So basically, I brought Damn. this inside of this. You see, it's got my address in it to this building already. They put the knife in there and then they use this prepaid package and they send it straight back to me. Oh, the little pods. I'm sure that we got another one of these in there. We saw it. Oh, that thing's sick. That's the problem. These things do look cool. They attract they me visually. Oh, Very yo. Damn. Homemade Triple stuff. nunchucks. Yeah. So you have these emergency bleed control kits what are yes. those and that's the thing about america like you can get any of like i went to walmart yesterday and you can just buy i've seen a lot of those knives in walmart yesterday this is another thing that we work on in this this is going to have things that can basically stem large bleeding 
we've got the full blanket. So if you lose too much blood and you're going to shock, this will keep you warm. We, did, we then got a tourniquet that would be used to stem bleeding. You put this four inches over the wound, not too tight, not too loose, and that will stop excessive blood loss. Then we've got the open vented chest seals. That's something that if you get any stab wounds in the chest area, you have to put this on and it will stop air from going into the body and basically collapsing the lung or causing more problems. And do you think this should be standard issue for people 100%. these days? You know what the thing is about it, right? What? There's first responders and a lot of people see first responders as the emergency services. But you need to think about it. A young group of children walking home from school. Who's really the first respondent? The friend that's seen it happening. And facts. if their friends have that's got the facts. right knowledge, or the right equipment to stop bleeding. Because usually, if you get hit somewhere in the, like if you get stabbed in your archery, you can bleed out in minutes. Yeah, and 999 wouldn't even make it to you. Tyler, you know where it is when you get stabbed? Dumb. Your adrenaline is rushing, and you don't even realize you got stabbed because it feels like you're getting punched. Where I really noticed it was a bit weird was, you know when you bleed, you can feel the blood trickling on you? down your body. But when I touched my neck, there was no blood on my hand. Is that your stab? I got stabbed in my neck, my head, my chest, my what? back, my bum. 18 times, I got stabbed nine times once, then nine times the next time. <laughs> it goes all the way down there, across my... Holy that looks painful. Yeah, across my clavicle bone. I mean, it healed quite well. But when I touched it, I, there was no blood coming, but I could feel the blood dripping, but I was bleeding inside. So it's forming a hematoma. I lost 40% oh, of my blood wow. there. They put me to induced coma. A day into their coma, I, I jumped out of my induced coma and I grabbed the nurse by her hair, started pulling my wires out because obviously I was in shock. My body's fighting from shock, do you know what I mean? So they basically shot nine again. Oh, then I got up, man, I had a tube out my neck, tube in my arm, dripping my other arm, tube in my foot, I had a catheter in, and there I was just like, F me, man. But my main problem was like, it gave me nerve damage. So I had a lot to work back from. It's like a big shock. Like when I got stabbed, it's like a big blur of white wind. Ching! I just heard a big ringing noise like that and I couldn't understand what happened. Like out of the five nerves that control your neck and your arm and all that, four of them got cut straight through, the fifth one got severed. The guy Dang. stabbed me once, stabbed me twice, but the second stab in my neck, my arms went down, bang like that. I was trying to fight, like fight, fight him off and he just kept stabbing me, stabbing me and then I fell on the floor. And I was like, I remember thinking, Fuck. I was like, I've never lost a fight before, what the f just happened? I was like, man. All I thought in my head, I got defeated. And then after that, it's like, he started to go one way. I started to crawl off like that. I was crawling off, I was like, and, uh, and I said to him, you bastard. And then he come back to me again when I was crawling off. I thought, I was like, oh, me. Then he stabbed me in my fucking spine, just oh. in my spine, and stabbed me in my, on the bottom of my bum again. I was like, you man. And after that, the fucking police come in it. I'm trying to be normal now, you get me? I'm I don't think we ever heard this man's story. I don't know why he's never told a story on one of these. This is the first, maybe he has. I. This is the first time I'm hearing it. <laughs> I'm not trying to get arrested. They've come up to me, they're like, oh, we heard there's been a fight, what's going on? Da, 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 da. I said, nothing, man. I said, I'm good, man. No, nothing's going on. And she's chatting to me, chatting to me. Like, These times, I'm, I'm starting to fade now. I've just been stabbed nine times in it. So I'm just like, she's like, you're right? I'm like, yeah, I'm cool, I'm, I'm all right, man. I said, what's wrong? I said, oh, I'm tired, I've been jogging. But these times, I'm, I, like, I'm in the process of losing all my blood, do you get me? Yeah, yeah, you're dying. And then she's like, how did the officer not see you? Cold red, cold red, cold red, multiple stab wounds, bro. Literally, I look there, my top's just going like that. It's just getting redder, oh. redder, 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 and it's redder. My air hair was hanging on my shoulder. I just remember getting rushed to the hospital. I just remember saying to him like, "Why am my arm working? Why am my arm working?" And he just said to me like, "Our main thing is to stop your bleeding right now." You know what? That's crazy. You know, I don't really know how the body works, the like tendons in the bodies, but I've had like pain right here and my arms start hurting like what the heck is going on like like when you sleep wrong and you wake up and you feel like you're in your neck and then you trying to move and stretch it but then you like pinch something and then your arm tighten up it's like okay you get me i got so much blood and after that yeah i think getting stabbed is horrific not gonna lie to you like if i can't like me coming from chicago i'd, I, I'd almost rather get shot but like not in a like if okay, like let me let me rephrase this. If I was to get shot like right here, I'd rather get shot right here than stabbed right here. Because it would go right through probably. It'll just burn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I, I feel like with a stab, like they're gonna pull, they're gonna put in, pull out. It's gonna have it's gonna mess up some it's gonna do a lot more damage, I feel. I don't know. I just feel like it's more brutal for some reason. And the type of person you are to stab somebody, like you gotta be, you gotta be off, you gotta, 
You gotta just really not care. The man's just literally the road to recovery. It went from anger, revenge, and I think that's why I've just got such a, a fight against knife crime. I feel like every single day I take a knife of someone, I feel like I'm getting my bit back at knife crime for what happened to me, do you know what I'm saying? So it's just like a forever burning furnace in my chest to just do what I can towards knife crime, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, who, who was this guy? So he had a fight with my, a female family member. I come back and defended it hand to hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And smacked him up, then he come back with a knife and I used to pride myself in fighting man. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that that was me. Like I don't like I, like I'd have a fight. I weren't a bully or nothing, but I could definitely hold my own. Think about yeah, it, I got stabbed yeah. nine times once, then I got stabbed nine times again. If I was an, a habitual knife carrier, I would have been the one doing the stabbing. And even to this day now, I'd never carry a knife. Like I'm I'm good and the life that I live, that like, it'd be very, very strange for me to get in any sort of sort of incidents where a knife's gonna be turning me, do you know what I mean? You see America. You see when you don't say you're going to give someone a life sentence, they be like, you get 100 years plus two more life sentences. Now that's a real life sentence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk about it. Talk about the sentencing in the UK. In the UK, you get a life sentence. You get 21 years and you up for parole. Yeah. Sure. In England, when you get a life sentence, someone's been in jail for a couple of years, they get 12 years, do half of it before you know what they're out in for. People say, oh, but look in America, people still do crazy things. I get it. But guess what? That crazy person, he ain't gonna be around for 70 years no more. He ain't getting a chance to come back out and do the same thing again. So I do Thanks. think, yeah, the consequences in terms of law for people that's using and stabbing, it's not a good deterrent. I just basically pray, yeah, that the children of England don't get the accessibility to guns. Like, think of how calculated, premeditated you gotta be to say, you know what, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna take my knife from that order from USA. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in my pants. I'm gonna make sure that I don't get cut with a straight edge. I'm gonna go five miles down the road. I'm gonna wait outside the guy's building or his school. I'm gonna stab him. And then they've got to do a whole new getaway now with this whole bloodstained knife. He's got to make sure he gets close enough to that person and pushes it in, hear the cry, feel the knife go. That's what I just said. To do this to somebody, you're a different type of person. Like, you gotta get up close and all of this, like, oh my God. Bone. You really got to be on like demon time. Tissue and everything and run away with a knife that's going to be bloodstained. How hard do you think a person with that mind state, yeah? How hard is it going to be for him to put a gun and, and pull it at someone? Oh, it's it's easy. It's it's inhuman to it's just different. pull a trigger. It's yeah. a for fresh air for now. This is wild that people are buying these for 50p. I, I mean, I don't know why. Most of that, How is this even possible? Well, these guys are not only taking these blades straight out of Elden Ring off the streets and into safe hands, they also melt right. the metal from these blades and turn it into things like gym Elden Ring is crazy. Equipment for at risk youth to use at this youth center they're building. We got a partnership at Amazon. All their defected goods or return goods, they come to us and we basically get an engineer, fix them with young people, and we give them out to the community or people Whoa. that's in need of them. We've got about 28 rooms that are done. These are some of the rooms we've got about 30 to go we go upstairs down this is cool this is gonna cut this this is the type of energy that curves you know what I'm saying that eventually keeps people off from being what they what they don't need to be this is the energy that keeps young kids out of the streets and from turning in to steppers that's what I'm trying to say Upstairs, massive photography and film studios, media rooms, and we really want to do a lot of dynamic activities to really empower and support these young people. All here, from end to end, will be one massive video wall. Yo! This is sick! Yeah! With resources to turn in your weapon and chill in a safe environment after school, you gotta wonder why young men are buying these weapons in the first place. I met up with- Nine times out of ten is for their own safety. I'm gonna let you know right now, like half of these youngins probably are don't even not even built like that, but they don't want to be caught lacking. You know what I'm saying? They'd rather be self-defense situation than a victim. Look at Marvin. Boy, that boy got on four different blues. Fresh out here, ain't he? Marvin Herbert, ex-career criminal, gangster, and alleged killer. He learned his lesson the hard way, though, after getting shot in the face and balls. And he now advocates for the youth to stay away from the life of crime he once led. But before we meet Marv, have you ever had someone place a paper bag full of burning dog poop on your front door after Googling your address, finding where you live, and hunting you down? Neither have I. But I'm sure that's happened to someone because data brokers are selling your information. Oh, salute. Fishing salute. W, out of w ad. Of the arch and delete hours. Join w the ad. ad checkout. W ad. Marvin, everyone calls you an ex-career criminal, and now what are you up to? 
I'm a shepherd. I'm leading the people towards a better destiny, a better outcome and a better sort of journeys. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, I'm t t steering people away from my old existence. In Byron got some money now. This fit, look, this fit decent. To a light of love and acceptance and sort of a selflessness. And was there something that happened to you that led you to switch your path and pivot? Um, yeah, well, basically, if I'm being honest, I got arrested in 2012 for four murders and I got extradited from Spain to England to stand trial. Whilst I was on trial and one of the people that used to work for me run a bill up, we used to give people drugs and everything to sell, and this one kid run a bill up that was ex exponential and he needed to be taught a lesson. So I wanted to hurt him. When I went to hurt him, I kind of I found out it was my son's best mate or one of my son's closest friends. And I realised the ripple effect of the actions I was committing was just harming kids. And it's got to stop. And that was that in 2014, I decided not to engage in criminal activities where young people are risking their life, their liberties and their futures on a product that ain't going to get them anywhere. And then basically, I've had to go through a transition of getting, losing all my money, all my assets, all the bits and pieces that I accumulated in that world. I had to let it go to start my journey fresh so I can demonstrate by example on how to change your life. I see a scar across your face. Yeah. Is that a prosthetic eye? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. Did you get shot in the eye? Yeah, I got shot point blank range. I got shot in my leg. It went down my penis and shot my right testicle out. I got shot in my arm. It bounced off the floor, went through my hip and exited oh. my pelt, my seven and eight foot lower vertebrae. Oh. And then basically he, he finished up with a head shot here. You put your finger on there, look. Yeah. No, that finger, look. Okay. Where the bullet went through. Oh, shit. Look, it's stopped. I don't know how you're live, by the way. It's stopped halfway through, look. So how are I'm still, you live right now, Mark? I don't know, I don't know. What were you doing back then? Everything, everything. How are we doing? How you doing, man? Good to see you, good to see you. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Marvin Herbert. Marvin. A legend. Oh, shit. It seemed like Marvin's criminal past had made him a legend in the community. Big Marvin, big Marvin. Yeah, there we go. Have an amazing afternoon, ladies. Don't let yourself down. You know everyone out here. This is your, this is your place. This is my planet. Yeah, this, this is where I'm from, innit? So this is where all the major raves were here and the forum in Kenneth Hatton and Cannon Palace. At 11, 12 years of age, we was, I was already a crackhead, smoking crack, heroin. Yeah, he did a crack at 12. 11, 12, yeah, we were selling it at first and That's second right. year of secondary school. We were smoking crack and selling crack. That was a different era then. God, first, wait a minute, 11? And heroin and ecstasies. And basically, because these were the places we used to come, it sounds crazy, I mean, yeah? 11 is wild. Pretty crazy. Uh, 11, 12 years later, it sounds crazy, but this was our reality. This so, Marv, you're a nice guy. People are taking photos with you. You're smiling. You're saying, hey, how you doing? Were you always like that? No, I've always, I've always been nice. I was the kind of criminal that protected the weaker criminals. So, so I took on adversity because I didn't like bullies. I think I've been stabbed and cut about 24 times. I've been shot five times and I've been hit with an axe. Stabbing weren't a problem. Okay. Being stabbed weren't a problem for me. And getting shot weren't a problem for me. Okay. It was it was me stabbing and shooting other people that became a problem. You Say you got a kid here, right? And I'll give you something to get you on your feet to help you. Right. And I know you got no money. Got nothing. Yeah? But then when you f up, I'm supposed to do what? Stab and shoot you. That's not you fair. You have to, right? Yeah, but it's not fair, is it? I've never hurt anybody for money. Do you know what I mean? That's one thing I've never done. And anybody that owed me money, they got they got left alone. Have an amazing afternoon, gentlemen. I will do. Don't let yourself down there. <laughs> You're like a ray of sunshine out here, boss. Yeah, I like make, making people feel comfortable, man. Yeah. Have an amazing afternoon, lady. And I like making people smile. Have an amazing afternoon. See, there you go. Hey. Yo, thank you very much, my brother. No one ever thanks you for keeping this sweet and clean. Marvin seemed like he was channeling the energy he once used to allegedly murder people. I feel like, when was the, when was the, when did his interview come out? How long ago? To being that? a force for positivity in the same community he used to be a complete medicine. Just like some of the troubled youth we see today stabbing each other with knives bought off Timu. Let's go back. So 13 years old, let's say, how do you eventually get into top dog status, king of the criminals, if you will, and end up getting shot? Going up the criminal ladder, it started with car stereos. From the car stereos, we went into cars. From the cars, we went into burglaries. I didn't like burglaries, so I went straight from the cars into vans delivery vehicles, anyone delivering vehicles or precious goods. And then after that afternoon, afternoon, 
OG. OG? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Where are we here? Basically, car stereos to cars, to delivery trucks, to money. You know, money's in transit, the secure core vehicle. Yeah, his rise is... And they went from secure core vehicles into guns and drugs and murders, and then into the, what's it called, logistics and transportation of drugs. So I've been arrested for maybe 18, 18 shootings, 25 murders. Um, I don't know how many armed robberies, armed robberies. <laughs> bro's, <laughs> bro's origin story is diabolical. No cap. Do you hear this? This is diabolical. You know? Um, How did they not lock you up? Because it's not what they know, it's what they can prove. I see. Are people eyeing for the crown you sit upon at the time? No. No. No one, no one can take my crown. So are you compensating for some of the evil things you've done or yeah, what? Yeah, that's all it is. We're giving back, man. Have an amazing day, people. Wow. Well, basically, no, I started realizing that all the people in that criminal world never love me. And I've been risking my... No, time out. Is he just walking down the street with his eye out in his hand? Is that, is that sanitary? I'm asking real questions. I want to know. I'm pretty sure his hands is clean. My whole life, because no one comes to see me in the hospital. I helped hundreds of people from my whole childhood against bullies. And not one of them come to see me. Why? They Do you think they would today? No. They're all wankers. Have an amazing day, sir. When you've been involved in shootings and murders, right? Nice, and sir. you've seen people shot in the head and killed. When you get shot all over and you're lying on the floor and someone walks up to you and puts a bullet in your head, a gun in your head and go bang, bang, you don't expect to wake up. And yeah. the fact that I never even passed out, I rung my own ambulance. What? I thought, I, I, I didn't think it was real. Because when he shot me in the face, it all went numb. I don't know what happened. What, what I did do was got better. Okay. Yeah. Healed up. Ah! Now I'm the sickest machine you'll ever see. And if any of them come in my journey right now, then they'd, they'd face me at the best version of me possible. I actually realized that the, the, the universe, people call it God, wanted me alive, mate. Have an amazing day, sir. When I've turned my life around and I've run out of money and I had nowhere to live and I was homeless, my mate, I rang him up, I said, what can I do, where can I go? And he said, I've got a yard. You can have the yard. So huh. to... Let's check it out. All oh, right on. That's this a nice little flat, eh? What do we got going on here? What's up, Bear? This is this is my headquarters. Okay. This is where we're starting HMP from. Okay. So this is a reset we're witnessing. This is a reset, man. This so you went from reset. top of the organized crime world and you're back here. You're resetting. With all the alleged murders and crimes to rise to the top. That's tough top of the criminal ladder once the law catches up <coughs> you get sent all the way back down to level one i met up with venom yeah, to me this is why that's it's not worth it bro it's not worth it it's not worth it yeah that money fast in that world the money is fast but the, the the repercussions of it if you get caught are even faster you're gonna be in that jail cell so quick boy you ain't gonna know what hit you and that the net is not worth it youngster allegedly still in the game who looks up to marv so i could try to figure out why he would even consider messing with the law after seeing marv's current life situation um have you ever had to use a knife um yeah in the kitchen <laughs> okay yeah. and you're kind of a new gen criminal or what mm, i wouldn't say i'm a criminal it's just that get by and laugh do you know i mean well you see what i'm saying that this that was the, the knife he was holding is his knife right allegedly but what kind of knife was it kitchen knife you see what i'm saying you can ban all that other stuff, but them kitchen knives, you can't really ban them. And that's what's used. For government, I don't see working a nine to five gonna get you a nice car or get a mortgage or, do you know what I mean? When you're in government, you're locked in. So I just wanna have a good laugh. So you're taking to some more uh, unconventional methods to make some money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the things I wanna do like that, do you know what I mean? I can't do it with a nine to five. And plus, like, I don't really like taking orders or, do you know what I mean? So you're kind of independent on the streets? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, but yeah, when I was, I, was, I was homeless when I was 14, 15, and I went to care. Do you know what I mean? I had to do like, criminal stuff to, like, to be able to pay for a hotel because I couldn't get ours. Because I didn't have no family or support when I was younger. I did, but not as good, do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So you walk around here, you... Um... So he's a victim of his circumstances. Okay. I don't want to say at least that's where he got that going from, but I know some criminals that came from good homes that had plenty of opportunity and I just, that rubs me the wrong way every time. <laughs> you have like a piece on you? Um, I ain't gonna say 
too much, but... What, what's something one might protect themselves with out here? Well, out here in London, it could be anything goes, mate. You could yeah. have a bottle of acid, a chiv, a pinga. A bottle of acid? No, yeah. Huh? Yeah, anything goes. In like, when you're not... Yeah, that also is, is wicked. That's wicked. Bro, it's different. It's not like you're all by and you can just walk down the street and then, I mean? Yeah, you got to look off your shoulder. You don't know who's who. You don't know who's talking behind your back. You don't know who's trying to stab you in the back or set you up. So, it's not a nice life, but it builds you into a strong person. I got stabbed three weeks ago as well. You got stabbed? Yeah. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. That's another one. I've got scars all over my arms, my legs, stabbed in my face. I don't give a f who you are, what you've done in your life. What, 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 what status or whereabouts? Do you know what I mean? You pissed me off. You could be Chris McGregor, right? Not you, Joshua. You know, I know I'm going to lose in my head, but you know, I'm not losing. I'm winning. I'm going to step toe to toe. And if I get knocked out, sweet, I'll go and I'll come back with a bigger thing. Do you know what I mean? That's how it is. I ain't backing out for no one. thing, we're talking maybe a chicken cutter? I don't know. It might be a paintball gun or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I got this from an unknown source, but this is pretty standard carry out here or what? Yeah, that's 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 no, that's normal. That's the people this run around. It's a kitchen knife, or yeah, what? Yeah, that's. Do you know what I mean? People run around with Rambo's, ZK. Do you know I mean? Took their arm off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so in the kitchen, does, do sometimes you gotta get something sharp and uh, chop away at the rotisserie chicken? Yeah. Yeah. This is when the chicken acts up, or when you have to make the chicken know, like, hey, I'm I rule these streets. Um, nah, I don't do I in don't defense. do that. Like, do you know I mean? If, I don't look at person. Someone's making money over there. I ain't gonna go up to him and say, right, you're on my block making money. Nah, if everyone eats, everyone eats. But if you bore my peace or bore any of my family or my, my friends, then yeah. It's not like the olden days where everyone has a one-on-one -on -one straight now, like down around Millwall or in the park or and you shake hands and you walk off. Nah, mate. Yeah. Like my other friend, I mean, he got stabbed like that. I mean, he died. Like, one more tattoo, like, all that. Like, so all these tattoos represent people you've lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're here and here. And this is due to knife violence or what? One was knife violence. One was um, a bike accident. A bike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. come off a bike. I think he's chased by police. I don't know. I don't know the full story. So I've had to do it and learn things and learn, pick up things during the streets, do you know what I mean? Sure. But I don't regret it because it's made me the person who I am. So, How did you get the name Venom? Um, obviously, obviously, I'm a good, like, loving, loyal, caring, respectful person, but like, when shit goes down and I have to, I have to like, go on a job or I have to do oh, someone, sweet. then I'm the most evilest person, do you know what I mean? Because- You're eerie? Like, I won't say I'm, an, I'm a good person, but when like, you piss me off or, then yeah, like, I don't know about- Would you- if the chicken pissed you off, would you give him a slice? Yeah. So yeah. I'd probably bother for fighting that. Or would it just be more of a preventative slice, like f off, mate? Yeah, but I'd punch it down the face. You punch him before you slice the chicken? No, 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 no. I've, I've slashed him. Beat the chicken, but. Oh, you slap him. Yeah, before I've, I've done See why I've got paranoid schizophrenia? Like, I'd I'd rather, I'd rather do the geezer before he does me. Like, I got stabbed in my chest, like. Do you know what I mean? I was very close, I didn't die. And, but the doctor said, I've never experienced anyone that's been stabbed in the chest and how they are now. I said, mate, you just gotta keep positive. No point me, um, and ah, and all, I got a scar, do you know what I mean? Or, do it, it's, it is what it is, isn't it? Do you know You've been to prison? Yeah, I've done about six six years. And, oh. mate, and, and the crime rate's going up, and the, the, the police are. Like, the crime's going standing up. standing there, and you'll be watching someone getting robbed for a bike or a kettle. They're just shitting themselves. Old oh, boy, just, they're just employing everyone. Because they ain't got no proper stuff. They're, just, they're employing fucking facts. And I'm looking and thinking, how the fuck you passed a police training thing? <laughs> you could, you know what I mean? I'm thinking the same thing when I see some UK police, and even American police, but I watch a lot of UK content, so I'll be like, what is they gonna do? Like, but uh, nobody's taking them serious out here. You know, I mean, I've experienced it there, and I've learned it when I was in HM people, uh, Belmarsh. The, the alarm's gone off, and then one, one black fellow, one mate of mine called Money, he come up to me, he's like, mate, do you know what he's in here for? I said, nah. I said, he's a sausage. He looks like a sausage. What is a sausage? Like, like, a, di like a div, innit? Like, like a wanker, innit? Mate, my black pal said to me, he's like, mate, he's in here, he's phoned old Bill to the house, old Bill's come, he's grabbed the two old Bill, killed him, chopped him up, boiled him, he's, he's cooked him, and he's ate them. What? Eat them? He ate them, yeah. The only way he got found guilty, they done a DNA test on his sh and had the police in his shit. On yeah. his boo boo? And I'm, there, and I'm there throwing wet tissue at him, and I'm thinking, what? But he looked. The reality of the road is everybody's trying to get off it. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Like, I ain't stopping until I've got 10 mil fat and I'm off. I can block my own yard. Like, my kids, kids, kids are good. Like, I'm not stopping. And I'm not, and I'm not standing for less. So you won't leave the game until you have that figured out? Yeah, do you know what I mean? My own business, like, I ain't, well, I ain't doing no nine to five. It's a terrible exit plan. You're not gonna lead a game until you get 10 million. You're gonna be hustling forever. You're gonna be in the game forever. It's not many street dealers that can up, 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 up 10 tickets on you. No, it's not gonna happen. Maybe you could get one and then start your own enterprise legally, but. 
Yeah, you can't walk you, away you, from you, that you, fast money. Well, you don't respect any because if you had to drive and save up to 30 grand, you ain't gonna blow it as quick as you mean. Well, see, when I'm getting 30 grand with that 30 minute job, I'm, I'm blowing it. Like, I'm not taking it serious, but I'm thinking, yeah. Exactly. So, how will you ever get to 10 million dollars? Like, it's a revolving door. Money comes fast and, it, and you gain it fast. And just like you say, when you get that fast money, it's gone even faster. So your plan to be gone at $10 million, it'll never happen because you blow your money too fast. It's, it's, uh, it's a trap. You're trapping and you're doing these jobs, but you ain't. It's, it's a dead end. It's a self-caused dead end, though. Yeah, we we'll do another job. We're talking like coke and hookers or what? No, no, no. What are we talking? Robberies. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Venom. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Yeah, no worries. Marv, what's going on with today's youth? <laughs> Is it much different from when you were a little gangster? Because look, when we were kids growing up, yeah, we had to fight to create a, a, a reputation, like, and you had to stand up and fight. You had to stand up for yourself, and if you weren't prepared to stand up for yourself, then you was used and abused. But if you had a difference with somebody, or you had an issue with someone, then you had to have a fight. And that was how you sorted your differences, by fighting. With the knife? No, with hands and feet. The, the, the knives came in later. So what do you think has changed in the modern youth's perspective on violence, stabbing each other? Just clout. Being a part of a gang? Social media, social media and clout. games. Because the kids don't realize how serious their actions are. So when they commit these stabbings and these cuttings, they don't actually realize that they're actually gonna decapitate someone. People are really out here dying for clout. Cripple someone or kill someone. And then they think, Sh what have I done? I don't wanna go to prison. And then they fall apart. When we were growing up, we knew what we were doing and we knew the consequences and we were prepared to eat the consequences. So if you'd done something to me that was bad enough, then I would happily stab you up or shoot you and go to prison because it was worth it for me. Nowadays, these kids ain't got no values on anything. They're killing each other for nothing. That that life ain't worth it. And if you're going down that road, then you are pathetically wasting your life and every opportunity you have to be the best version of you. And I know you're helping the youth now. What are you doing? Well, set up systems in football, boxing, music, media, and construction to help navigate kids away from crime into training and employment. But more importantly, I work with the hardest to reach kids that are leaving school, leaving care, and leaving prison. And I try to get them into being the best versions of them they can be. My idea is to create a business model with them and set them off into a sustainable lifestyle and a passion that they love. Do you think knives are the problem with these kids? Some no. people say, ban the knives, that'll solve everything. It seems a little it's bit not the problem. I think That's it, the scapegoat, though. It's the mindset of the individuals and it's the elders and the, and the peers and the parents. It's the peers and the social landscapes that are molding our youngsters into being the barbaric killers that they're becoming for nothing. Special thanks to Marv and Farron, and you can go see Marv speak live this August. Link to everyone's socials and more info in the description below. That's a good watch. I'm not even gonna hold you. That's a good watch, Tyler. Salute, Tyler. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, let me know. I'm gone.